Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Wednesday. We are halfway through another week and we are already slap bang into transfer season. The Premier League only finished at the weekend with that game against Everton and already there is lots of stuff to talk about, lots of news doing the rounds. Um, so let's talk about it, let's dive straight in, shall we? We'll start with a story that I broke yesterday. Um, I don't know if you've seen it or not, if, if not you can find it on my social media channels but I just wanted to come on here and talk a little bit more about it, give you a gist of what's going on and this is Arsenal and the strike hunt and they have held talks with the agent of Napoli striker Victor Osimen. I hope I got that pronunciation right, if I didn't I'm sure you're all going to flood into my comments like you usually do and yes I am notoriously bad when it comes to pronunciations, I believe it's Victor Osimen, um, but uh, if not apologies but you know who I'm talking about anyway, the Napoli striker, Nigeria, international and um, fantastic striker and I know from seeing previous comments on videos that I've done about Arsenal potentially going for forwards that he is one that plenty of you think that they should be targeting well you'll be happy to know that they have held talks his agent flew in my understanding is he flew in last week to London and held talks with Edu about Osimhen now this is very not me saying that Arsenal are going to sign him by any means because as far as I'm aware Arsenal are very aware that it's going to be very, very difficult to sign Osimhen. A, because of, well, mainly just because of who he plays for. Napoli, notoriously difficult to deal with. Um, they are in no position where they really have to sell, as far as I'm aware. Um, they're in the Champions League, which is going to you know, boost their finances even more. And they only, uh, they only signed Osimhen in 2020, I think it was. They spent about £68 million, I think it was about €80 million Euros on him. And so if Arsenal are going to do a deal for him, they're going to have to pay, you know, in excess of that sort of money. Um, and, you know, you're looking and you're pushing towards almost three figures then. And, you know, will Arsenal do that in a season when they haven't qualified for the Champions League? I don't know. But it is something they're exploring. And um, he is a striker as far as I'm aware who is up on their list of targets. Now, this isn't a small list. There are plenty of strikers on it. I'm sure you know all the names by now or lots of the names. There might be some others that we don't know about. But uh, Victor Osimhen is certainly on that list and talks have taken place with the agent to try and kind of scope out the situation and find out exactly you know, how much it could take, if the player would be interested in coming to Arsenal, um, that sort of thing. So it's one to keep an eye on. We're very much at the very start of this transfer window now. Obviously, there's going to be lots of twists and turns, lots of bumps in the road. Um, uh, and we'll see who Arsenal end up getting when it comes to the forwards. I mean, they're definitely going to get one. They're potentially going to get two. I think we're going to wait and see what happens with um, Eddie and Ketia. I mean, Laka, I mean, that's just Laka's going to go. I'd be absolutely stunned if he doesn't. And Ketia, my hunch is that he's going to go. Maybe Arsenal might be able to convince him to stay. Maybe this end of season, little run he's had might convince him to stay. But I kind of feel like we're so far down things with Nketiah that I'd be surprised if he stays. But we'll wait and see. If he does go, then Arsenal will certainly be signing two strikers. If he doesn't, if he stays, then maybe they'll just do one, and uh, and that's it, and then go with Nketiah as well. We'll have to wait and see. But certainly forwards they're exploring at the moment. One of them is Napoli striker Victor Osimhen. Gabriel Jesus obviously is another. Um, he is priority target as far as I'm aware. He is like right at the top of that Arsenal list. His agents are also in London at the moment. They came over. They were at the Manchester City celebrations at the weekend. They were at the game at the parade, all that sort of thing. And they're over here to try and sort out Jesus's future as quickly as possible. They're in talks with Man City at the moment. I mean, they've been in talks with Arsenal for a long, long time. They know what Arsenal are offering. Jesus is very open to the idea of coming to Arsenal. Um, it's a case of seeing what Manchester City do. A, will Manchester City agree to sell? The At the moment, the way things stand, most people are expecting that they will. He's only got a year left on his contract, obviously. Um, he's, you know, If they're going to get any money for him, they're going to have to get it now, unless he signs a new one, which at this stage, it doesn't look like he will. Um, and then it's just a case of how much Manchester City are going to be demanded. It's an interesting one. This I've seen like £50 million being sort of suggested and you know that is a lot of money for someone who's only got one year left in his contract but you know he's a you know premium level forward he may not be at the top level the very highest level the Mbappes and those sort of players but very few are but he's certainly in and around the mix he's Premier League ready he's young still so 
if you kind of took the contract situation out of it, you'd think £50 million, pounds, that's not a no-no. Uh, I imagine Arsenal will certainly try and get him for less. That may well be Manchester City starting price. Arsenal will certainly point to the fact he's only got one year left in his contract and they will um, they will try and you know get, as, get him for as little as possible. I think a lot depends on Jesus. If he really, really pushes and says, look, I want to go, I want to join Arsenal, then Manchester City, they've got a decent relationship, obviously, with Mikel Arteta and... Pep doesn't tend to stand in the way of players' wishes. If a player says he wants to go, then Pep tends to think, OK, fine, go. And so maybe Arsenal will be able to come up with some sort of deal. Personally, for me, I think you're looking at sort of 35, 40 million. I don't think you would say no if you're Arsenal when they say, OK, that's what we want for him. Um, proven Premier League experience, like I said, young. Um, fits Mikel Arteta's plans and mould when it comes to forwards in terms of his work rate. Um and he can play in various positions across the front line as well. So I think when you look at sort of Osimen, then you, you know you know what you get with him, a very powerful striker, sort of leads the line, big number nine type forward. When it comes to Jesus, more of a hybrid type player who, yes, he can absolutely lead, lead the line. I think he would want to lead the line if he came, but he can play in, in various roles as well. And I think that would be quite appealing to Arsenal because they don't just want one for If they're going to bring in um, just one forward, I would say it might end up being a Jesus, I, I, just because he, as far as I'm aware, is a priority. But I think they like the idea of having someone who can play in multiple positions. But, you know, they're also looking at Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Tammy Abraham, those sort of players. And with Osimhen as well, you know, you've got the, the bigger number nine central type and then the hybrid type forward as well. So it'd be very interesting to see exactly what Arsenal do. But two of the players who are very much on that list are uh, Osimhen and Jesus. And like I said, Calvert-Lewin, Tammy Abraham, Alexander Isaac, all players they've looked at in the past. It's going to be an interesting summer transfer window. Let me know what you guys think. Who, who would you prefer to sign? If you could only sign one out of Osman and Jesus, who would it be? Uh, I've got a feeling I might know the answer to that, but it'll be interesting to see what your comments are anyway. Uh, one player who looks like he will be coming back to Arsenal uh, this summer is William Saliba. Now, this is, Saliba is just... I don't think there's a player who generates as much debate who has never played for Arsenal as William Saliba. Constantly I'm asked about it. Constantly, constantly, constantly. Um, you know, what's going on with him? As Arteta totally mucked it up. Well, Arteta has been speaking to RMC Sport over in France. I presume that this was after the game on Sunday and the quotes only got released yesterday. Um, and he's been talking about Saliba. And they're the most sort of forthright, honest comments I've seen from Arteta on Saliba since basically he left normally it's like yeah he's our player we'll see we'll see in the summer but this is you know he's pretty decisive when it comes to these comments on Saliba he says he has to come back he has the experience necessary to be competitive with us we made the right decision if he stayed with us this year with one Premier League match a week with Ben White and Gabriel he wouldn't have had half the playing time he had with Marseille that's for sure for his growth and what he can do next season that wouldn't have been good William wasn't with us because he wouldn't have had the playing time to gain experience. That's it. Nothing else. Very, very you know, decisive comments there from Arteta, basically saying, look, he is coming back. He may be saying this in response to all the kind of speculation and rumours that have been coming out of France. There's been various quotes attributed to Saliba, which sounds like they've been sort of misquoted in terms of exactly what his plans are for next season. You know, it was reported over in France. He's been saying, I definitely want to come back to Marseille. But... People who actually heard the interview, it seems like it's been a little bit lost in translation. He wasn't anywhere near as um, sort of blatant as that. He was saying, well, he was keeping things open, saying we'll see what happens. But this is Arteta very much saying, no, Saliba is coming back. And it's the first time he's ever said that. It's really, really interesting, I think. Um, and I think when he said, you know, it's, it, it explains it perfectly. When he said, we made the right decision. And I think he's spot on. Personally, I would have liked to have seen Saliba stay this season, but there is absolutely no doubt if he'd have stayed, he would not have played anywhere near as much as he's played in Marseille and he wouldn't be anywhere near further down in his progression than he is now. I think this loan has worked out very, very well for him, for Arsenal, as long, and this is the crucial thing, and this is what Arteta doesn't discuss here, but as long as he signs a new contract this summer, that's going to be key because if Saliba turns around when he comes back to England and says, I am not signing a new contract, then that puts Arsenal in a difficult situation because he's only got two years left on his deal. And then it's like, well, what do you do? Do you bring him back and say, right, you're playing, but you're not, okay, you don't sign. But then suddenly you, you get to the end of the season, he's only got one year left on his contract and his value has plummeted. So that's going to be the one interesting thing. Yes, Arteta can say he's going to come back, but you need to leave it to sign a new contract because you do not want him going down into that final year. 
at the moment it's difficult for him even if he did want to go to Marseille I don't see how Marseille could possibly afford him for a start even though they're in the Champions League um, I'm just not sure they could and I, and I think they're under a transfer ban as well or there's a potential transfer ban hanging over Marseille um, but I just think I think you know if if he comes back and signs a new contract I think it's been a brilliant loan this one in Marseille Sleeve has gone he's played week in week out he's got himself into the French team he's been crowned French player of the year his development has absolutely flown and if he'd been at Arsenal it just wouldn't have happened he would have played some games he would have sat out some games and he just wouldn't have got anywhere near as much progress, especially without European football. So like Arteta says, it's basically been one match a week. Um, so I suspect if he comes back next season, he might have to start behind White and Gabriel in a pecking order. I, I imagine he will definitely start behind White and Gabriel in a pecking order. It doesn't mean that he'll stay there. If he comes here and he backs himself and challenges himself, then all it takes is some good performance in the Premier League. It takes one injury, suddenly can muscle his way in. Look at Gabriel Martinelli at the start of the season. It wasn't really in Arteta's plans, wasn't in his thinking that much, wasn't playing very much. Then Smith Rowe got injured around, when was it, sort of November time. Martinelli scored one goal when he came on against Newcastle. Smith Rowe got injured and then suddenly Martinelli's been basically ever present ever since pretty much and that's what Saliba can do he's only 21 you can't be demanding to be starting week in week out at a club like Arsenal when you're 21 um, so if he comes over here he backs himself and he proves himself and he plays and he takes the chances when they do arise there's no reason why he can't force his way into the team and muscle his way past either Ben White or Gabriel in the pecking order so very encouraged to see those quotes uh, by Arteta because just like you you know I'm desperate to see Saliba come in I don't want to see Arsenal pay 28 million on this clearly very talented defender then him never play a single minute for the for the team so it'd be great if he does come back in the summer and then you're looking at the four center backs arsenal got they don't need to do anything really when you go if as long as they keep holding you got white gabriel saliba holding their four you know that's that a decent center back sort of haul you've got there in in the squad um and and it ticks all the boxes for me so yeah interesting let me know what you think about those arteta comments just before I go from one centre-back to another, again, another centre-back who has not played for Arsenal yet, uh, senior-wise anyway, Daniel Ballard. Some of you may know him, some of you may not, but if you don't, he's a very promising young centre-back at Arsenal, 22 years old now, spent last season out on loan at Millwall in the Championship, did really well. He's a Northern Ireland international, was at Blackpool on loan the season before that. Um, he's obviously come back now, he's got two years left on his contract, but my understanding on him is that Arsenal have now agreed uh, that they will sell him permanently this summer if a decent offer comes in. Um, there have been talks with Ballard's representatives recently to try and work out exactly what the plan is for him and they've kind of all come to a mutual agreement that the time is probably right now to move on with Daniel Ballard, sell him permanently, let him kickstart his career somewhere else, Arsenal get some money in and, uh, and everyone's a winner basically. Um, there is the option of He's still got two years left in his contract at Arsenal. You know, there is an option they could potentially decide to send him out on loan again. But as it stands right now, as long as they get a decent offer in, which they think is his value for money, then they will sell. And my understanding is a lot of interest in Ballard already. He was very, very good last season for Millwall in the Championship. There's lots of clubs, Championship, potential couple of Premier League clubs, clubs from abroad as well, who are looking at Daniel Ballard. So interesting to keep an eye on his future again my understanding of the situation is if Arsenal do sell then they will look to have some sort of clause a sell-on clause or a buyback clause even so yeah not sell-on sorry a buyback clause some sort of buyback clause included in the deal so that um, you know they could potentially bring him back if he does sort of kick on over the next couple of years at his new club and turn into a you know a very very good defender which he might well do because he's very very promising at the moment his progress in the last couple of years since the loan spells uh, has been very very good and um i think it's positive for arsenal as well because not everyone can come back and be a, can make it the first team at arsenal the academy boys if what you want with these loan the kind of loan market and the way arsenal use it and the way they haven't used it very well in the past is some of these guys get sent out on loan they really impress they progress and then they get sold on for good money. Chelsea have been brilliant at doing it for so long now. Arsenal need to get better at doing it. And they are slowly getting better at doing it. I think Ballard will be another example of that. So one to keep an eye on. But yeah, my understanding, Daniel Ballard is now available for transfer. And uh, could well be leaving this summer on a permanent basis. That's it. Thanks for watching. Everyone appreciate your time. As always, like I said, anything you agree with, disagree with, hit me up in the comments below. Let me know. Always enjoy it. Going through them to see what you guys are saying. Have a good day. I'll speak to you soon.